For a case of erectile dysfunction, using our mnemonic old carts as our guide, we'll note the onset, or when did it start. For the duration, we'd like to know if it's occurring constantly, for example, with masturbation and in the morning too, or is it more intermittent, occurring only with a partner. Next, we can note the progression. Does it appear to be occurring more frequently? Or, if there is no progression, we'll also be sure to state that in our patient note to show that we asked. To help characterize, we'll ask on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is flaccid and 10 is full erection, where are you? We'll also want to know about the libido and the mood, as we'll see below. Aggravating and alleviating factors, treatments tried such as over-the-counter supplements, and a severity here as well we can ask on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is flaccid and 10 is a full erection. For all cases, we'll order a genital exam, rectal exam, CBC, serum electrolytes, serum glucose, A1C, lipid panel, TSH, T4, FSH, LH, testosterone, and a Doppler ultrasound of the penis. Organic erectile dysfunction can be broken down into both vascular and neurogenic, and our supporting points will include erectile dysfunction, no early morning erections, and in vascular, we can see chest pain, claudication, and hair loss. And in neurogenic cases, we can see numbness or tingling. And our patient will have a history of hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, or smoking. In psychogenic ED, we'll see erectile dysfunction. Now we'll have the presence of early morning erections. We'll see a stress or depressed mood, and we'll use our mnemonic SIGI caps. And it will also be situational. That is, ED occurring with a partner and normal erections during masturbation. And we could add a PHQ-9 and a Beck depression inventory. In medication-induced erectile dysfunction, we'll see erectile dysfunction with no early morning erection and a history of beta blocker, SSRIs, or heavy alcohol use. And finally, in hypogonadism, which can either be primary or secondary, we'll see erectile dysfunction, a loss of early morning erections, decreased sex drive, fatigue, or depressed mood, and we'll use our mnemonic SIGI caps, and hair loss. We'll start our neuro exam with hand sanitizer, and we want to ask our SP if we have permission to examine them. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to start with the hint exam, and we're going to use it as a guide to help us out. So for the head, we could comment that it's normal cephalic, atraumatic, and then we can now transition to our fundoscope here, and we're going to use the same eye as the patient's eye. So we're going to use my right eye and his right eye. And so I'll ask him to keep looking straight ahead and we could verbalize that there's no fundoscopic lesions and he has no AV nicking or hemorrhages. For the cardio exam, a good way to do this is to degown the patient and just to help cover them up, you could ask him to please hold it in this position so that it's protected and covered. First thing we want to do is vis visualize. So we'll make a comment that there's no cardiac visible lesions I'm going to check the back and do the same thing as well. And now we're going to go ahead and palpate. So we're going to use a Z motion to just palpate and see if there's any pain, does that produce any pain? Do the same thing on the back as well. Okay, good. And uh, now that we didn't feel any pain, we'll go ahead and listen to the heart sound. The mnemonic we want to use is apartment M225A. That stands for the aortic, so we'll check that aortic first in the second intercostal space on the right. And then we're going to go to the pulmonic side. Tricuspid. And then we're going to go to the mitral. And if this was a female patient, a tip you could use to lift their breast up. Okay, we can make a comment that we heard a regular uh, audible S1, S2, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. We'll switch it over to the bell and we'll use that to listen above the clavicle. And the instructions you want to give is, when you feel my stethoscope, please breathe in and breathe out. So now we can make a comment that we heard clearer breast sounds, uh, no audible wheezing. We could just set the bed to 30 degrees for the uh, carotid exam. Ask them to go ahead and please lie down. 
then you don't want to forget to extend the leg rest. Okay. Once we have them lying down, we can now cover up, cover them up again, and we'll start the carotid brewery exam. Um, if you could ask the patient to please look to your left, and we'll use we're going to use now the bell of the stethoscope to first listen. Okay, and you make a comment that there's no audible brewies, and while he's still on the side, you can now feel for the pulse. And you could comment that there's a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. Do the same thing on the other side. So you can ask the patient to please turn, listen. Okay, you can make a comment that there's no audible bruise, and then feel for the pulse again. That it's a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. Finish up the cardio exam. We would just like to auscultate for the PMI. So to do this, the best uh, position to do this in is to have the patient to lean over on your left side, please. And just feel that it's not displaced at all and should be in the fifth intercostal space. And it's also very important not to forget to assess for the PMI, to auscultate for the PMI on the patient's left side and under the gown. If they were wearing a gown, we would go under the gown and we would just listen real quick. For motor strength on the lower extremities, could you please kick out? Okay, good. So that's five out of five. Now, can you please kick in? Good, five out of five. Now we'll go into sensation. So please close your eyes and let me know if you feel this equally on both sides. Yes, I do. Okay, great. And now we're going to go into pinprick. So this is a pinprick. I'm going to start on your left side and please let me know if you feel this all the way down. Yes, I feel it. Okay, and now I'm going to go on to your right side. So please let me know if you feel this. Yes, I do but not as much. Okay, so we have decreased the pinprick on the right side. For neuropathy, he may not uh, have good proprioception. So if we ask him that this is the up position and this is the down position, mm -hmm. where, where are we now? Are we up or down? I don't know. So he may say he doesn't know, and that, that would confirm that he has lost his proprioception for his patella as well. I want to ask him to relax and assess his patella reflex. Okay, good. And now, tap on his Achilles tendon. So we'd start right here, and we would, we would get a normal reflex. We could also test while we're down here a Babinski. So we could start on the bottom of the sole and go into the big toe. And note, if he had a positive Babinski, his toes would curl up. For the pulse, we're gonna go behind the medial malleoli, and we'll feel for the pulse, two plus pulse, and then we could do the same thing on the left extremity and verbalize we have a two plus bilaterally.